So I was having a conversation with a colleague earlier today, um, and we were talking about nonprofits and how nonprofits perpetuate the problems that we have within our society and community. Um, I've been saying that for so many years, and it's really true. I ended up writing down how nonprofits specifically are perpetuating poverty. And that's because poverty is a condition in the physical, but poverty is a really a mindset. And so if you are not addressing the mindset of the people that you are serving, then you are perpetuating their condition. And so I've worked in nonprofit for well over 15 years. It's been my career pretty much. And my talent and special skill is solving social problems from a holistic and conscious perspective, using a consciousness framework, but creating solutions that address the issues in real time, immediate surface level, but also creating solutions that are for long-term sustainability and long-term change. So that's my specialty, that's what I do. I creatively solve problems and I'm a highly strategic thinker. So this is how we land here. Now, if you are not working to change the mindset of the people that you serve, then you are just keeping them in the same pool for them to need you again, right? And there have been a lot of self-sufficiency programs. And I think that we think that self-sufficiency means just getting a job and, you know, uh, producing income in order to, you know, meet your basic needs, which that's a surface level solution. That's what I mean right there, right? So even self-sufficiency programs may give people training uh, or uh, skill development workshops so that people can find a job and be able to pay their expenses. And, or it might be, oh, go to school, get a degree, and then, you know, you go get a salary paying job. But neither one of those things or approaches deals with the mindset. None of those things. Those are, what I just named, are very tactical. Let me go put this job application in. In order to have a impact mindset wise, then the number one thing is that you have to do is around messaging. <clears throat> and repetitive messaging. It has to be repetitive messaging to help people shift their mindset out of this physical condition that we call poverty, right? That is going to take us speaking life into our communities, which we fail miserably at because we are constantly calling our communities underserved, underrepresented, marginalized, at risk, underprivileged, and all of the minority, all of these low frequency words we use these low frequency words to describe the people that we serve, right? So <laughs> if the people that we serve are marginalized, at risk, underserved, underrepresented, and all the other demeaning words because these messages are demeaning these words are demeaning and so because we are constantly describing the communities in these demeaning words then that is what that's part of what keeps us perpetuating the physical condition of poverty is because we're already telling them hey you marginalized you at risk you underserved. You underrepresented. You're a minor. You're a minority. A minor. That means little, small. You're a minority. That's also a demeaning word to 
to describe individuals of a culture or collective. Nothing about you as an individual is minor. And if nothing about me as an individual is minor, then nothing about me and the culture and community in which I belong to is minor either, right? And so while we are busy describing the people that we're serving in a very demeaning way, what do we think we are? Who do we think we are as leaders? How, who do we think we are as leaders if we are describing the people that we lead as marginalized, at risk, underserved, underrepresented, underprivileged, who do we think we are? Do we not think that we're marginalized <laughs> as leaders? Do we think we're not at risk? Do we think we're not underserved, underrepresented, a minority, underprivileged, right? So it's a very othering tone that we take in the nonprofit space. We are othering the people that we serve. We're saying, oh, those marginalized people over there need help. Those underserved, those at-risk youth. And so we put this separation between us as leaders and the people that we serve. That separation, that divide, is saying, I, the leader, know better than these underserved, marginalized, underrepresented minority people, right? Even if we have the same color, even if we are of the same race, understand that this is not identity politics. It doesn't matter if you're a white leader, a black leader, a brown leader, an Asian leader. It doesn't matter. If your attitude, if who you are is lacking in self-awareness, because that's consciousness. We're going to talk about that in a second. If, if you are separating yourself as the leader and you lack consciousness, how can you even say such words? Because I can say to you as a leader, oh, if you are a poor leader or a stagnant leader or an unconscious leader because you don't understand or realize that your words have power. There's power in the tongue. And so you calling your the people that you serve this, these words, and this is what you're writing in your proposals to foundations to get grant money, that energy of that money is being directed towards perpetuating the conditions, the physical conditions of the people that you serve, right? So I said to myself, what needs to happen or change, right? I told you already that I'm a problem solver, creative problem solver, highly strategic thinker. And I have been through a number of leadership programs. Uh, I won't say a number. I've been through like two <laughs> of leadership programs, but that was enough, right? I got invited to a couple other leadership. Um, people were suggesting for me to do Cleveland leadership and somebody else has suggested that I do like a neighborhood leadership institute. I already did a leadership program. After that one, I was like, this is cool, but we need something deeper. So anyway, I created something deeper and I don't know if I've landed on this name yet specifically to call it, but the but it is a conscious leadership program. And so what is consciousness? First of all, it's consciousness leadership program or conscious leadership. But what is consciousness? Consciousness is awareness. Consciousness is awareness. And consciousness 
with consciousness, you are able to be totally aware of your thoughts, emotions, and actions. And I just made a space right here because your thoughts plus your emotions equal your actions. Your actions don't come first. The thought of it, the feeling that you feel behind it, and then the decision that you make, the action that you take because of your thought and emotions, right? Even if it's a situation where you have to respond to it quickly. You know, let's say somebody come in and say like, oh, it's somebody is in distress. Your first thought is, oh, this is an emergency. Your feeling is, ooh, urgency, right? It's an emergency. It's urgency. Action is, let me go help this person that's in distress, right? So your awareness is, your consciousness is you being aware of whatever your so thoughts, wrong. your emotions. Thoughts. Because you're actually you're stressed out. Not what about I love so our much about talking about consciousness because of our is that uh, interpretation is the total of the physical conditions that may be occurring around us that then you get in our mind job and we might you know what I'm saying stress about consciousness it is all about you we actually don't it don't have anything to do with anybody else then it is the understanding that then can cause whatever stress is going on and occurring the action is occurring the within you, know, you in that case manifest so anyway, physically back to consciousness um, as a physical you know, condition the most right? important thing so about for example is, is this is there's a link it's between self. disease and, and, and stress right in order if for you are stressed our bodies aware, aren't designed to handle and connected to what's an overwhelming amount community with other stress you first for an extended period of time and sit aware of what's happening just continuously, continuously, right? And that is we are designed to have first uh, the communities and the leadership that we see never in just nonprofits, shirts. leaders, uh, in government, leaders. politics as well too. We see the same thing that there's a total disconnect between what the needs are in the community, even though we're aware of the needs, like we're we're aware of the needs. We are not aware of how to solve the needs. And so we put band-aid solutions on things. And even when we do call ourselves coming up with, you know, uh, going beyond the low-hanging fruit, even when we call ourselves taking a deep dive and getting to the root cause, <laughs> we, still, we still don't understand and know how to solve the issue because we lack consciousness. We, we're not even aware of ourselves we're not aware of ourselves as individuals and so that ends up translating to how communities are served again because if you're not aware of yourself how are you gonna be aware of the communities that you serve which is why we still run around calling people marginalized right you're not aware it's like you shouldn't call you shouldn't say that to people or about people because you're you're speaking that energy over them you know and then having them believe and now people walking you then you got kids walking around like i'm an at-risk team you know, I'm a minority. You know, I'm underrepresented. That no, you're not actually. You know what I mean? So we don't do a good job. We don't do a good job of saying the right thing. So anyway, back to the conscious leadership program. So what we're focusing on in this leadership program is around the awareness of our thoughts and emotions and therefore our actions. Another way to to put this is in a 5D, 4D, 3D term, meaning your thoughts are intangible. Your emotions are tangible, but intangible. They like in the middle, right? Tangible and intangible because your emotions you can feel, but they're, they're also tangible because they can produce a physical reaction. So you can cry so you know somebody's sad because it produces tears. Um, and so, and then the 3D in action uh, is the physical reality. It's, the, it's physical, it's what we can actually see. It's tangible, right? You can't see your thoughts, but you can see your emotions sometimes. Sometimes you can see your emotions and sometimes you can't see your emotions, which is why this level is intangible and tangible. But this level is tangible, totally tangible. So intangible is your thoughts. 
Intangible and tangible is your emotions, and tangible is your actual actions. And so this is kind of our, I want to say this is our basis or framework. This is just the understanding of what consciousness actually is. So I do use a tool, a map that I go by all the time, and it's called the Map of Consciousness, developed by Dr. David Hawkins. And... Okay, y'all can see this, all right. So up here on this top part, which is the highest level of consciousness, you see we exist in a spiritual paradigm. That's the enlightenment, peace, joy, and love. This is the goal, is to get here, right? But most of us are living in here in a survival paradigm, including our leaders, <laughs> including our leaders. So our leaders think, that they're probably here or here and then who they're serving is here without understanding that they are the people that they're serving because there's no separation. That's the law of oneness. So they may look at their constituents or the people that they serve as being in a survival paradigm, but they are completely unaware. They're completely unconscious <laughs> of the truth that they are, all, they are also in a survival paradigm because they aren't aware of themselves. And so the goal of the Consciousness Leadership Program is to raise your consciousness from a place of the survival paradigm into the reason and integrity paradigm. Now, if you get to the spiritual paradigm, you get extra bonus points. But where I'm starting from is just it's helping to take people from this place to this place. People who are willing, people who are willing, I have zero interest in talking to training or speaking people who are not ready or open for this level of personal development and growth. Because that's what this is. This is consciousness and conscious leadership program is a program about personal growth. Personal growth. That's, that's all this boils down to is personal growth. This is personal development for you. So I'm only interested in teaching, talking, speaking, and training people who are open and ready to take control over their lives, their thoughts, their emotions, and actions. And for people who are serious about changing the landscape of our social culture. You know, we have all of these social problems. We got lead poisoning, domestic violence, infant mortality, crime and violence. Um, we, ha we have so many issues, social problems, none of which are being solved. There's a lot of money going towards those things being solved, but it's, a lot, it's been a lot of money that's been going towards these issues for decades, half a century, centuries even, maybe, that we still haven't been able to figure out, right? And we haven't been able to figure it out because... We, a nonprofit, the focus is, ne is not on self at all. It's, it's, it's never a problem with us. The problem is always outside of us. The problem is always systemic racism. It's always um, narcissism. It's always all of these things that you don't have control over. The only thing you have control over is you. When you change, it changes. When you change, it changes. Don't ask for things to change. Ask how you can change. And when you change, things will change. And that is what we really are touching on in conscious leadership is understanding how you are the change. Understanding how you are the change. Understanding how you are the change.